Okay, now to continue on with my theory about how the current system has been running. Picture this, okay? Osama bin Laden, um, George W. Bush is needing a distraction, uh, or more particularly, his backers are needing a distraction. Now remember that um, the backers are the people who brought in free trade. They are well aware of the fact that there are uh, still people in three quarters of the world who end up getting impoverished and killed in some cases due to the diseases and other uh, uh, poor workplace safety conditions such as in China and other stuff like that. They are well aware of the fact that sweatshops and other things in three quarters of the world kill millions of people. And, uh, or at least I suspect that some of these corporate heads are. So if they're aware that people are getting killed from this, I hardly think they're going to, um, you know, they're hardly going to uh, worry about killing a few uh, people. But the thing is that bottom line, they need a distraction. So what does Bush do? Or, or Bush's family? They contact Bin Laden. They says, I suspect they knew full well where he was, at least, at least for the Dubai treatment. They got a CIA operative to go over and talk to them. Again, assuming it was some sort of official head from the government, probably the CIA operative was unaware. Osama hires a couple of his people and makes it claim that it's a religious attack. The religious uh, people who follow his network at Al-Qaeda totally believe him. They attack the, they take the Twin Towers and they attack the Pentagon, the, uh, the plane that crashes down in, the, uh, in Maryland, and they attack the Twin Towers. 2,000 people are killed and a couple of uh, Muslims are killed in, um, in what they believe to be a religious uh, uh, fight. This is where I'm talking about, again, about twisting of ideology to get people... Uh. Now, anyway, here's my concern. No sooner, no sooner does the, um, no sooner does the, uh, the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the Twin Towers fall, than the Patriot Act is sprung forward. Less than a week later, I mean, literally less than a week. Um, there have been public reports about, uh, about, the, C about the Senate actually as, uh, may give it, going an inquiry into this and asking a bunch of questions of, uh, of names, etc., that promptly became classified afterwards. But I digress. Now, here's the thing. Penn and Teller bullshit did an episode debunking the so-called um, debunking the so-called uh, Big Brother problem at, uh, by simply saying the government was too incompetent, didn't even read the Patriot Act before they signed it, saying they're too incompetent to be a Big Brother. But here's my problem with this, and this is one the one fundamental theory which I think that people overlook in this. It doesn't a conspiracy does not require the entire government to be in on it. It only requires a couple of people, a couple of overzealous people who want to maintain a control. Um, you know, a couple, uh, basically like a couple of the power mongers behind the scenes to put something forward uh, and have a bunch of incompetent people in power to sign it, not realizing they're actually uh, supporting a conspiracy. And here's the thing, uh, and this is the bit which, wor which worries me more. They've got these uh, things now like where, you know, they can, uh, they can track your car. Uh, again, Penn and Tall Bullshit uh, talked about this. Like they've got these GPS things where they can track your car, that sort of thing. They've got uh, uh, these new GPS things and phones which allow people to uh, hack the phones. They've got uh, greater power to monitor your email and stuff like that. Now the thing is people say, let's not worry about it, let's not worry about it. It's just infringement on our civil rights. In Canada, we have something similar, but we did, um, now I'll get to Canada in a second. But, uh, you know, for the U.S., um, you, uh, you guys have the... Uh, like they say, uh, there's still quite a few people who are saying like, oh, it's nowhere near a totalitarian state. We've got nothing to worry about. Well, here's the thing which worries me about this. It doesn't matter if, uh, if the bulk of the government is, uh, is totalitarian or not. A single overzealous bureaucrat who's wanting to get bumped up in the rakes need only access, need only resort to uh, 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 using of wiretapping and stuff like that under the Patriot Act or deliberately entrap people um, or what have you just to, because um, if he catches terrorists, so, uh, uh, supposed terrorists, he gets a bump up in his promotion. Or what about the, uh, or the fact that even a few, um, say for example, if, uh, if the corporate heads find somebody like Noam Chomsky or somebody like that who they don't like, all they have to do is just simply um, demand that the uh, police um, uh, use this under the Patriot Act and monitor them. Like it would not be that difficult to, uh, you know, you see the thing is that the fact that it's even there gives a lot of leeway. And that's where the problem comes in. Now, the thing, of course, is, though, is that, um, remember, if we repeat from history, um, the Reichstag fire, uh, where, the, uh, where the parliament was burned down, was blamed on the Jews and the conspiracy of communists and the Jews and everything by Hitler um, in the hopes of trying to maintain a totalitarian dictatorship. He, uh, like I said, he was elected in. He, there was about a term, and, uh, uh, and then it went bad. Now, of course, the thing is, though, is that, um, uh, don't get me started on the second uh, uh, national um, elections, but, you know, there's a two-term thing in office. But here's the thing. Uh, ancient Rome... And, and here's the thing I'd like to uh, get people. Now, you know, uh, dictatorships ve uh, vary from format to format, of course. You know, people, particularly in a society which is supposedly democratic, they don't want people aware of, um, uh, of these sort of things. But let me bear something in mind for you. Ancient Rome, 
uh, when they became an empire. They kept all the trappings of democracy, uh, of the traditional republic, to make people think that there wasn't really an empire. The Senate still lasted right up until the very sacking of Rome, just to make sure that the, that the plebs and the patricians all believed that they were still taking part in the, um, in the uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, in the republic, and that the reason there was still an imperator was that the state of emergency had lasted for several hundred years. Remember, when Octavius came into power as the imperator, he said the Republic has been saved, the Republic has been saved. However, people like Mark Antony might still show up, and, you know, as a possible emergency, I'm taking control of it as imperator and seizing the uh, military and power and control until this emergency is abated, and then I will, draw, um, then I will you know, disappear again once the, um, I will, you know, I will step, uh, rescind power back to the Senate once the, emergency, the duration of the emergency is over. That emergency never ended. Now, the thing is that even if we don't have an imperator now, it would only require an oligarchy, the Republicans constantly getting back in, or even uh, the same oligarchy controlling, uh, uh, behind the scenes, controlling both parties. Here's another thing, which uh, another fact for you, which might be of interest. Ralph Nader, the, a member of the Green Party, never got ma very many votes because he was never actually allowed to attend the presidential debates. Why were they never allowing a third party in? That does raise questions for me. If it's truly a democracy... If it's truly a Republican democracy where everybody should have the right to run, then why cannot a third party go in, uh, as, you know, i.e. the Greens, and run their own presidential candidate as a possibility for the seat? They haven't been allowed. So that raises questions too. But again, oligarchy aside, I think my main concern is, is the fact that, um, and here's the other thing on the secondary presidential elections. Did you know that in the states uh, pertaining to the Bible Belt, they actually put an extra question on the ballot? Um, which is, do you support gay marriage? Yes or no? And only in those states. And the interesting thing about that is that that brought out the religious right in droves. You know, uh, right-wing Christians who would normally not vote in elections. That tipped the vote in favor of the Republicans. Also, uh, remember there was some uh, accusation of scandal pertaining to the voting machines. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, this is something that you can uh, check up on. The machines, were the, the physical machines for the electronic voting in those states which used them, were uh, designed by one company in Halliburton the software by another. And there was no extra record keeping system so uh, that was external. So the votes could have been rigged, and the electronics could have been rigged, and no one would have been the wiser. Now I'm not trying to make a conspiracy theory here, but I am just simply saying I think we should keep watch of this. And what with this presidential election coming up this year, um, and what with the fact that there's going to be another year of a Canadian provincial election, um, I'm thinking we should start seriously start looking at the contemplation that maybe the current systems are not working. Again, let's just see how the uh, elections actually pan out. But um, my proposal uh, for the U.S. is, uh, you know, again, and uh, in Canada, we've had the Conservative Party come in. And we've had uh, where the, fortunately, they've been a minority government. And two of the uh, five major things about, you know, uh, 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 infringements on civil rights in Canada were decided not to be needed, so we voted them out. Again, we're a tad more democratic than the U.S. is, so I'm, I think we're a little bit better off. But I'm, str I'm strongly beginning to think that, at least for you guys down, uh, down south of the border, uh, you might want to have a constitutional convention at some point. Um, again, if the Patriot Act is suppressed uh, or surpassed certain parts of the, uh, of the um, uh, Constitution, then it might not be a bad idea to take a look at the current system and see if it actually is truly democratic. And if so, uh, and if not, maybe uh, it might be worth a rewrite of the Constitution um, to you know, uh, like do a full-scale rewrite. Um, rewriting, uh, making sure that laws like uh, the Patriot Act could not be brought in, uh, infringing on people's rights. Or, you know, I mean, like if it was a really a terrorist threat, just simply, um, just simply uh, uh, make a blanket case from the courts to do it, or something like that. You know, like you know, make or, or you know, speed up the process in the case of terrorist cases. You know, amend the law or something. Um, and as for the, you know, if it does become a totalitarian state, um, us up here in Canada are going to start feeling the effects of it because, regardless of uh, of how democratic we are, um, we'll start. You know, we always end up uh, picking up a slightly watered-down version of American law, much like our big brother to the south. Um, I'll continue more in, um, in the um, next video.